Hello, my name is Doug Bowen and I'm the Programme Leader for Foundation Art and Design. This is Andre Petranin, the Associate Programme Leader for Foundation and Art and Design. Foundation at Britannica is the first year of BA and we are going to talk to you about the portfolio, which is your entry to the course. And so portfolio can be digital or physical and it's a collection of work uh, by you as a, a creative practitioner. Um, and we're interested in a variety of aspects um, and something that it will definitely cover is a range of skills, uh, which may be traditional um, skills such as 2D. Yeah, um, you should include drawing, painting, photography, collage, printmaking, any experimental techniques. And then maybe 3D and sort of spatial work that might be um, a kiln if you have access to it, uh, maybe casting, um, but it might be using materials that you have available to you, like even cardboard or fabrics and, um, and textile. Um, maybe, even, might... maybe even paper and plasticine. Yeah, um, then maybe even what, like Adobe programs too. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, like software skills, um, software technical skills that you might be using as well as um, video, cameras, photography. Maybe even something more experimental, like performance or work with sound. We're also interested in risk. Yes, you should show all your experiments and even failures, because they might lead you to something unexpected and interesting. Yeah, so maybe that's playing with the material to sort of understand it. Um, that might not be in a sort of portfolio page, but it might be contained within, um, you know, a sketchbook or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're interested in your passions, um, your individuality, um, maybe specific artists and designers that you're also really interested in too. So at the British High School of Art and Design, we have um, six different assessment criteria for your portfolio, and we grade um, each assessment criteria um, between excellent and weak. Um, so the first one is observational drawing. Yeah, observational drawing actually is um, drawing something that you can see around. That might be people, animals, different objects, spaces inside and outside. Working maybe with perspective, thinking about viewpoints, maybe light, shadow, this sort of thing. Um, so if you don't include any drawing from what you can see, then you will get um, a weak mark. Um, so not fantasy, not something that's in your head. Um, yeah. Contextual understanding um, is artists and designers that are related to your work. Um, so that could be contemporary artists and designers, but it could also be um, art historical. Um, so if you don't include any research um, that's related to your work, also you will be uh, considered weak. Mm -hmm. It's also very important to show a range of processes. Uh, so it's like earlier we mentioned that you should show works in different mediums and techniques, um, like 2D and 3D. Moving image, performance, sound. Photography and uh, lens-based. So if a candidate has no range, uh, then you will be considered weak. So like I said before, if you have uh, only drawing or only software, you will be considered. Yeah, even if those works are amazing, but if you don't show the range of things. Um, an experimental approach to media as well is uh, something that we're interested in. So that's you trying something in different ways, really playing with it to sort of understand what it can do, uh, what the sort of barriers are of it, what are the kind of edge of working with that media. Uh, you can also show and um, your experiments with uh, mixing different materials and techniques. It might lead you to something unpredictable and exciting. So a weak candidate would be someone that has uh, a very sort of conservative use of the material and doesn't try to uh, play in mm -hmm. any way. Um, it's also very important to show ability to develop ideas. 
And that's probably going to be found in a sketchbook rather than the uh, portfolio pages itself. Um, so if you have just the first idea that comes into your head and you make it, that is going to be weak. We want to see the sort of story of how something has developed and changed over yeah. time. Um, and last of all, quality of crafting. So how well has something been made? So for example, um, in an edit of a video, how um, well thought out is the transition from one thing to another or with animation or maybe with photography, but it can also be applied to uh, different materials of how well cast something is or how well sewn is something too. Uh, so we're looking at your range of processes, but the um, crafting ability of the and the sort of final outcome. Of course, we are not expecting to see work uh, of an excellent uh, quality, but try to do your best. Um, so we wanted to show you an example of an excellent portfolio, which comes from one student on the pre-degree um, programs, the preparatory courses. Um, this is what we would consider excellent. And we wanted to talk to you about um, the relationship to uh, the portfolio and the assessment criteria. Um, you probably won't have the access uh, to what our students have. Um, so you might not have all of the, this range, but this is an excellent um, portfolio if it was graded. Um, though if you do do pre-foundation, you will be automatically accepted um, if you pass the course. Um, so uh, in terms of a range of processes, um, we have um, printmaking here. So we've got screen printing. Um, we will look at the final outcomes, uh, for example, with these. We're looking at maybe the registration of the screen print. Uh, we're maybe looking at um, how well aligned um, the sort of print is in relation to the, the sort of page. Um, so for this level um, at the moment, this would be considered as, as excellent because of the, uh, like I said, registration and sort of straightness of the prints. But the rules are the same for digital portfolio when you arrange uh, works uh, in your PDF portfolio, you also need to consider the layout and the accuracy of the image. Yeah, so make it, as on the previous example, we had three images. Um, here we also have three images, but the layout is different. So it's exciting to sort of see difference and change. So here we've got um, dry points, or you might have like etching. So with this, maybe you're looking at, um, you know, how well printed something is. This can also be done quite easily at home as well. So you might not have the facilities that our students have on the preparatory courses, but you can use um, your own processes. So here again, we have the dark room, you probably don't have a dark room at home, but these are using photograms. Cyanotype. Um, experimental uh, photo technique, photo printing, but if you don't have access, you can experiment uh, with your photo camera or even the camera on your smartphone. Just try to ex be more experimental and think what you can achieve using that uh, instrument. Yeah, there are some processes where you can make uh, pinhole cameras and they could be done at home so you don't just need to have a full dark room to be able to produce some of your work. Um, here we've got a mix of digital photography but also um, three dimensions so each of these letters have, has been um, physically produced so they've been cut out of cardboard and um, glued together um, but this, is, this work is also demonstrating an understanding of composition um, it's looking at maybe lighting and sort of perspective and viewpoints. Um, but here we can look at the crafting of the actual three dimensions, but also the digital image itself. Um, you may have video um, and you may have animation and you can obviously include those um, physically with a USB stick. But um, in a PDF, you might have a link to 
it loaded on Vimeo or YouTube or something? Uh, so now we are moving to 3D work. Um, this is a clay sculpture and here in the portfolio it's represented in from different angles. Uh, so it's very important to see the uh, complicated shape of this object. Uh, and uh, you can see it was documented and photographed on a white background. So nothing uh, distracts us from the work. Yeah, they're really high quality images. Um, so they're not pixelated. We can really clearly see it. We can see that it's sort of photograph. It's got different sort of angles and shape. Um, so make sure that you think about yeah, white backgrounds, clear space, so we understand what we're looking at. Uh, this work is interesting with uh, its texture and little details. So you can see here the photograph of. Uh, the object itself, but we also have the zoom in of a detail. Uh, so it's um, uh, important to show the work in the best way. Yeah, so if you're unable to bring a portfolio physically and you submit it digitally, um, detail shots are really, really important. If you've got the physical thing, then we can obviously see it much closer up um, and like, you know, bring it to our faces and sort of check how something has been made. Um, obviously, this is maybe the first time that this person has been um, using casting. Um, but in terms of quality of crafting, we might be looking at the cast itself in terms of maybe like uh, bubbles and stuff like that. Um, but it might also be the edge, you know, in the photograph here, you can sort of see that it's not like, you know, a sort of perfect sort of straight edge. Uh, maybe that's being quite sort of harsh, but if we're looking at a spectrum of weak and excellent, maybe this is um, still good or, um, or excellent, but maybe there are ways where this person can develop their skills. And they might not be good at everything. That's okay. Cardboard sculpture, so it's a more accessible material. And here it's also shown from different sides, so you can see the like volume and uh, probably it's quite difficult to understand the size of the sculpture in the pictures because it appears bigger in reality than uh, in the pictures. And I think in terms of quality of crafting with, with this work, um, you can sort of see that the student here has really sort of thought about the front face and therefore has got rid of uh, the cardboard, but then maybe they've sort of forgot about it here actually, and you can sort of see the edge. So in terms of quality of crafting, that could be potentially sort of marked down. Um, and you can kind of see that definitely on this sort of side that there were some mistakes made. Um, so maybe redoing this, if you have the time, um, obviously the students are on a rotation, so they can't redo everything, but if you're at home, and you're able to um, refine those skills and um, remake something like this, then you're showing the development that you've understood, oh, there's a problem there and I need to improve it, um, which you can see in this object because they've started to try to uh, correct the mistakes. Um, Maybe a, a sort of slight issue with, with this as a sort of portfolio page is we don't understand the scale of this object. As you can sort of see here, the photographs are actually almost twice the size of, uh, of the, the work itself. Um, so maybe for us understanding the scale of uh, the piece, that might be um, relevant to sort of show it in relation to other things. Um, Uh, this work made from imagination, uh, so you can see the 2D character in the uh, comics and uh, digitally colored uh, work, but uh, actually it was made out of plasticine first and then staged and uh, 
coloured. So drawing can be done in different ways. You might be making comics at home and making little publications. You might be doing digital drawing in, you know, uh, Adobe Illustrator or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to explain the difference between um, those fantasy and fictional characters and what observational drawing is. So observational drawing is, like we said previously, um, looking at the real world, what is in front of you, what can you see with your eyes. So here it might be working towards a vanishing point, working with viewpoint, working with perspective, and it could be working just with simple shapes and thinking about how uh, to sort of show that they are um, dimensional. Uh, this is a more detailed work. Uh, here you can see um, uh, how texture was shown, light and shadow, uh, perspective again. So it's also experiment with the material. In this particular case, it's uh, charcoal, what the qualities of the material. You might be attending life drawing classes or you have friends or family that can kind of pose for you. Um, maybe you can be more diverse in the processes that you show us within your drawing. So the previous examples were a bit more detailed, whereas these are much more simple in terms of kind of capturing a minimal, minimal line and a, a posture or a movement or a, it could even be like a dance. And here, um, at just a seated figure, um, again, these, maybe because of the scale of this, uh, this is within a sort of um, a room and it's not in your uh, little sketchbook where you're drawing people on the train. Um, but yeah, life drawing um, should be included if you have it. This is more experimental work, but it also uh, started with uh exploration of uh, the reality. So then it was transformed into something uh, more abstract. Uh, you can see that he was uh, work with texture, layering, uh, composition. Here, collage has been utilized to make a much more layered image. So maybe in the previous example, it was uh, more um, layered in terms of using like inks and paints and things like that. Whereas here we've got bits of paper that's been stuck on. Um, this is a, a, of Gestava, the museum. Um, so you may be looking at different aspects of it, working with the, for instance, if this is the stairs, you're working with um, negative space or positive space. Here there's maybe a bit more kind of shading, working with colour, um, so we sort of understand where it maybe comes from. Um, so that in one image, there is multiple different methods and processes that are used. So your work doesn't just have to contain uh, one method or process in one image, it could be several. Uh, here you can recognise different objects like chairs and uh, the lamp. Uh, it's very simple, simplified, uh, and it's also overlapping. Uh, this is a work uh, uh, with uh, positive and negative space. Uh, so you also can see an experimental approach uh, to uh, observational drawing. Here the student or candidate is working with um, different methods in, in one page. So we have, um, you know, a, a charcoal drawing, maybe looking at tone, lighting, um, whereas here it's maybe about sort of shape and detail. Here it's maybe about mark making and texture. Um, and this maybe it's one image, but you can sort of see that the shell has been rotated and it's been um, shown through colour. So, you know, blue, a uh, sort of sharp angle, and the green that's on a, a sort of more of a flat angle. Here is also students experimented with uh, uh, qualities of the materials. So, for instance, uh, these three were drawn 
uh, using graphite pencil, but you can see how differently uh, this instrument was used. Perspective uh, could be really useful and interesting to sort of play with. So this is a, a pine cone that anybody can have access to, but because it's been enlarged massively, it's become abstract. Um, the student, the candidate has then worked with like maybe certain mark making to create texture. Um, so when you're working with observational drawing, we've shown you some lots of different ways to be quite playful with it, where you're maybe working with um, yeah, perspective, viewpoint, um, enlargement as well. Um, so development of ideas. Um, where does the um, project start and where does it end? Um, so the beginning, for a sketchbook, you might be documenting the processes that you've done. Um, so what have you done to arrive at the idea and the maybe end outcomes that we've seen in the portfolio so far? So a sketchbook is really useful to document those processes. So here, in terms of sort of character design or sort of silhouette of a character, the student, the candidate has worked with lots of different sorts of shapes and you might sort of recognize the kind of the character um, here from the from the portfolio, this um, three dimensional version here. But first it was uh, developed uh, from the silhouette into a 2D character and uh, later uh, the student tried to represent it in three dimensional format. Uh, it also was work um, with the different sides, you can see it's like uh, showing in different perspectives. Then a little uh, objects and environment was created uh, for this character and it was staged and documented, photographed. So here student also considered uh, light um, composition um, and here you can see um, research on illustrators, on a particular illustrator uh, whose work is somehow uh, relevant and affected uh, this character creation. Uh, in terms of simpl simplicity, uh, color um, combination. And yeah, maybe it's, I think it's important to mention that the artist's work isn't being sort of reproduced or something, that this is a unique work by the student and they're not just copying one of these characters, they've made their own. So they're not plagiarizing and taking someone else's idea. So here you can see the development of these uh, photographs. They were digitally colored, uh, different variations of coloring. And then uh, this character uh, was used to make a little story. Here this student was thinking how to show this story, uh, making different layouts, testing, and thinking how uh, to, to show the story in the best way. And you've seen the final version of the comics in the portfolio. And then we also wanted to show an example of a different type of project. So with the textiles um, or sculpture, so maybe it starts with working with um, shapes, folding, cutting, drawing, the sort of simplifying, working with negative space, starting to work maybe with color, thinking about how the line can then become dimensional and, and three-dimensional and becomes like wire and how that can then have form and volume working, starting to now work with materials of thinking about how a drawing can then become sewn and things could become padded and, and voluminous. Then there were experiments with uh, different uh, types of textile and uh, the students started thinking of 
color, the combination of materials, and how uh, this soft and 2D materials could be transformed into a sculpture. So with this work, it seems quite important that shape, um, you know, the, the sort of repetition of like shape is important, but also the transition of color, you know, red becomes yellow. And maybe if the student had a little bit more time, they have proposals for how this sculpture could be um, enlarged um, and maybe thinking about it working in a sort of specific space. So then contextual um, research, you may be looking at uh, not just artists, but you're looking at designers. Um, so you might be, if you're interested in graphics, you might be looking at um, fonts and typefaces. Um, so here you can sort of see that looking at contemporary um, and also historical um, type designers. Um, this is an excellent example and you might not have as many sort of pages and research as this and that's okay, but we are interested in you having an understanding and a knowledge of contemporary practices as maybe as well as um, art historical references as well. Again, maybe depends on what's linked to your projects, you know, maybe this is linked to the drawing work that the student has done, um, or it might be to do with the design work that the student has done. Um, you might also have a personal book that contains uh, drawings, maybe they are observational, uh, maybe they're a bit more graphic, maybe it's to do with mark making, um, but again, something like this shows your individuality, your personality, your maybe hobbies, your interests, what you're engaged in. Um, so if you do have like a, a little book that is just, doesn't have development, but it just has play, you can absolutely include that as well. Um, so three tips that we have for you. Um, make sure that you are communicating your um, project effectively. Remember, we are strangers. We don't know you. We don't know your work. And we don't know the project. So if you need to include um, a very, very short sentence or two to explain a project, um, you can do. But make it discreet. Make it sort of small. Um, you can also check the website um, to look at other videos about how to create a portfolio, um, especially a digital portfolio, but the similar things apply to what we've discussed today. You should also consider the order of the works, so try to arrange them uh, logically uh, so we can go through the portfolio and understand uh, what kind of work you show us and why you collected them in a particular way. And lastly, um, make sure that the work that you are submitting is yours, um, either that you're not taking uh, someone else's property, intellectual property, creative property, and pretending that it's yours, but also copying. We're not interested in you copying an artist's work. We're interested in individuality and uh, your own um, thought processes. Um, so we're really looking forward to seeing uh, your portfolios and good luck. Good luck.